Got it. So the uh, most important uh, feature, I think, when you're getting a program started in your local council is presence. Um, presence uh, at your local council's activities to include doing presentations on Sea Scouts at local roundtables, uh, presentations at University of Scouting, um, presentations at uh, commissioner colleges, having to uh, display booths at uh, your local OA section conclaves, and, and finally attending uh, leadership events. Um, at the events, uh, what we're not here to do is really ask for anything. What we're here to do is make folks aware that Sea Scouts uh, exists. Tell them about the program and, and raise awareness uh, consistently at um, these type of events. Now, uh, the key thing that we're gonna be focusing on is building those uh, relationships with key people uh, in the council, to include the council key three, you know, your scout executive, your uh, council president, your council commissioner, uh, the commissioner core in general, uh, your, uh, the scouting professionals in the local council, and uh, others uh, as needed. So in order to build those relationships, it's, it's those events on the um, uh, previous uh, slide that I discussed, uh, that's really where you're gonna start to build. make sure that when you're attending those functions, uh, you've done your homework, uh, you, you're aware of who all those people are and make sure that you seek them out and uh, you get to know them and they get to know you. And uh, again, it's not to um, ask them for, for anything. Um, what you're doing is you're going out, you're introducing yourself to them, you're letting them know that if, you if they have any questions about Sea Scouting or if there's anything that you can do for them um, related to Sea Scouts, um, to say, hey, uh, let me know if you need anything. Um, and then what we're really trying to do there is uh, keep the conversation about uh, Sea Scouts and uh, its advantages. And, you know, there's lots of advantages um, to, uh, to the Sea Scout program, but some of the things that as you're talking to council leaders that they like to hear are, you know, the opportunities for new charter organizations. You know, it's, it's unlikely that a, um, uh, you know, a power squadron or a local marina is going to charter a, a Cub Scout pack, but I think it's very likely that uh, they would charter a, a, a Sea Scout. If there's no, you know, Sea Scout ships, they're not going to probably have a relationship with the power squadron and the Coast Guard Auxiliary, uh, and that's just a an opportunity for the council and, and scouting to, to branch out and be involved with other organizations they uh, um, wouldn't be otherwise able to be involved with. And, and this is a, a huge one, and this is what I've really found in my local area, is that Sea Scouts really allows you to uh, find adult leaders um, that are there, uh, certainly interested um, in a uh, helping out with uh, young men and women in a, in a sailing program. Um, in, uh, in my local area, what we've found is uh, we've been able to reach out to uh, many, uh, you know, former scouters who uh, once their children aged out of uh, scouting, you know, they weren't really interested in going camping with 13 year olds anymore. Uh, and they're not really interested in participating in district or council operations, but they still admire scouting. And uh, they're definitely interested in being involved in scouting if it means they can help teach young men, men and women how to uh, sail, go power boating, or uh, paddle sports, whatever their particular interest is. Um, we found plenty of those adults. Uh, in fact, in, uh, in my ship, uh, pretty much all the adults are just that category. Um, former scouters, that are now, you know, that came back to scouting um, that are interested in a aquatics program, but aren't interested in helping in district or council operations or a camping program. And, and finally, I think the most obvious uh, advantage is a, a source of new youth membership. You know, um, it's no secret that it's difficult for Boy Scouts to recruit uh, high school age uh, kids, but um, you know, I haven't seen any issue with high school age kids that are in the ship 
um, bringing in uh, new friends uh, that aren't currently involved in scouting into the program. And, and I think all these advantages, when you tell them about the, uh, to the count district and council leadership, it will, each of these will help, I think, uh, get their ear. So what we move on to is um, making the ask. So what, what I've found is, is when you're working with, a, uh, with another council, you know, you don't want to appear as that traveling salesman that's just coming by and trying to immediately make the sale. You want to work with them for a while, develop that relationship. And once you have that relationship with those uh, uh, leaders in that council, you want to start asking them, hey, do you know anybody who might be a good sea scouter? Um, these, uh, you know, these key people in the council will generally have uh, some names that are in mind. And um, I've had pretty good luck. Um, you know, I'm in Colonial Virginia Council, but uh, until a few months ago, we had, had no Sea Scout ships in Tidewater Council. And uh, we worked for a while to build a relationship with uh, Tidewater Council. And um, earlier, or I guess it was late last year, we finally did go ahead and make the ask to some of their professionals and other um, senior uh, volunteers and sort of ask, hey, who would be some good Sea Scout uh, leaders? And they were more than happy to share it once we developed a uh, relationship. And they, they gave me a, a list of uh, names. And once we contacted those folks, they had even more names that they were willing to share with us. So what we did is we, uh, we organized a Sea um, Scout Adult Leader Basic Training uh, one afternoon. And basically what it was uh, billed as was a, hey, let's just talk, let's sit down, have a conversation and about how Sea Scouts works, which was the, the basic training. And um, at the end of it, uh, the, the, the groups of adults basically uh, fanned out by uh, geography, formed uh, two groups, and then they basically said, hey, we want to start Sea Scout ships. And uh, they started um, doing the work to get those uh, two Sea Scout ships started, uh, which became ships uh, 42 in uh, Virginia Beach and ships uh, 64 in um, in Norfolk. And it really wasn't, uh, and by having so many people in the room that were interested in, in sea scouting and had a merit, uh, maritime background, the enthusiasm was contagious and the commitment was not that hard to get because the, you know everybody just looked around and they saw, well, I'm not going to be alone in this. I'm happy to uh, join in. So now um, has come the uh, the challenging part is, of course, uh, the follow-up. You know, you want to follow up uh, regularly um, with these folks as they've gotten the uh, Sea Scout ship uh, off the ground, but not too much. So you don't want to you know, be lording over them, and you're going to sort of be asking, uh, acting as a commissioner for the uh, first year or so. Um, and I think I think probably uh, our biggest role that we've had with them is really just making sure they're aware of uh, Sea Scout events, you know, passing on information like our Sea Scout Academy, Sea Badge opportunities, uh, making sure they're aware of things like, uh, you know, SEAL or the uh, Cutter Eagle Cruise. Um, now, although this effort uh, was successful in, uh, in, in, in Tidewater Council, um, it wasn't, you know, we were hoping to get um, not just ships going in Norfolk and um, Virginia Beach. We we're also hoping um, in the uh, northeast part of uh, North Carolina, the Elizabeth City area, to get a Sea Scout ship um, going there. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to, uh, to make it happen. Uh, the relationships uh, haven't matured um, as quickly as I would have liked them to. But um, that's okay. Um, because I'm going to keep engaging them regularly. It, uh, sometimes relationships take longer um, than a year to build. Um, you know, we've had some false starts where some folks that uh, we thought were going to be motivated turned out to be um, not as motivated as we hoped. But um, that's okay. You know, we're in this for the long haul. So uh, what I encourage folks to do is, is not push a, um, a Sea Scout ship uh, on a council if they're not ready. Just because somebody shows up and says, hey, I want to do it. If you get a ship chartered and a full 
and it folds within the first year, or, or I guess to say it, it doesn't recharter for a second year, that'll leave a bad taste in everyone's mouth. And that'll make getting that Sea Scout ship re restarted um, that much more difficult. So what we're trying to build um, is enduring units that are held in, in high regard by the council. And as you get that first or second uh, unit started in the council, they'll be able to help start the, uh, the third or fourth ship in that council and really be able to have a viable and sustainable program uh, going in that council. Thanks so much for having me, Bruce.